my, my background is in classical realism. After my school, that's, that's where I was at psychologically in my work. And I kept going with that, always with, with in the back of my mind knowing that there was something else that I was looking for. In New York, you live in such a claustrophobic area, just the density of the woods, and it's mostly flat, so you're not, um, you don't get these huge vistas. And so when we moved to Colorado, and I, everything opened up, it was, it, it really felt like a, the time was right for me to reinvent myself in a way. I started skiing again, and one of the first things I noticed was what I was seeing at the top of mountains looking down into the valley. And so that really opened my eyes to a whole new way of looking at things. That really influenced me and my work changed quite dramatically. resident since 2003, Bayard Holland specializes in abstract landscapes and Asian-influenced Sumi paintings that explore the underlying energy and emotion of the physical world. No matter what art form you're involved in, it, there, there are different ways of approaching it. Mostly I use what I see as a starting point and whether um, I go out and sketch or uh, lately I've been using aerial photographs, um, that, that's always just the starting point. And I tend to start with a big picture, just get a lot down quickly, and then subtract and scrape down. And then I'm going to start finding things that are playing off of each other, whether it's colors or forms or um, mysterious things and then I build up again and then scrape down so I'm really working over a broad field and there will be small detailed passages in my work that I want to retain because my work tends to do um, tends to work more with large, uh, broad planes of tone and color playing off each other. But within that, you need kind of what I like to refer to as like a, a diamond, a, a little area or more than one area that, that has a lot of spark to it or something just really kind of crazy going on. The point of having these passages in my work that have these uh, visions of Indians or animals, or it, it basically goes back to the idea that what we see is is fifty percent tied to our imagination and how we perceive the history of the place we're looking at. One of the things I do in my studio is I vary the projects that I work on. I can get burnt out on, on doing large paintings and then I could switch to Sumi's to get rejuvenated. The Sumis are, are uh, totally spontaneous. I work in an abstract expressionist style, but I'm using Asian tools, a Sumi brush and a Sumi ink. 
and it gives it an Asian flavor. So it's a marriage of different traditions. And I basically just have to go purely on intuition in a very rapid manner. And I'm really trying to capture the movement and the essence of the model. Most of my work right now um, is dealing with an aerial view of the world that we're living in. And when I first moved to the valley, I started working off the mountaintops and sketching what was below me. And recently, I began getting interested in getting even further away because we seem to be in a very pivotal moment in the history of man where people are really starting to look at our relationship as a species to the planet that we're living on. And one of the amazing things are these satellite photos of the planet where you can just zoom in as tight as you want. So it's amazing to me to, to look at these and to see how suburban areas and city areas are connecting to agricultural areas and how agricultural areas are connecting to wilderness areas and as an artist the tension that's created by the uh, those two things coming together is very interesting. Since my departure from classical realism, my work is really more about looking for what's underneath the physical. And so what I'm trying to do is tap into that energy that isn't visible in that physical sense.